Welcome to The Brain Factor, hosted by myself, Joy Riddle, and Laura Hawley. We're a part of Meridian Behavioral Healthcare, where we believe that wellness is within everyone's reach. This podcast is a conversation about what research-based protective factors look like in real life. Our hope is that you'll walk away with something that you can use in your own life and have had some fun with us along the way. So let's get started. Hi, welcome to The Brain Factor. Today I have with me a special guest, Dr. Uh, Maggie Labarda, and she's here and we're going to talk about good relationships today. I don't know if you know this, but the relationship that you have with yourself is the absolute most important relationship. So Maggie is now retired and doing some fantastic things. She's an amazing artist, um, painter, Uh, She travels, but Maggie was a clinical psychologist for a long time, many, many years. A few. A few (laughs) years, yes, and was the CEO of a major uh, community mental health center. So we're so happy to have you here today. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Maggie's a personal friend of mine. so. (laughs) So this episode is called the one about loving yourself. So we want to talk about loving yourself today and how that important, how important that is in your life and your resiliency in your relationship. So I'm super excited from your perspective to know what you think about that. Yeah, I think it's great to focus on that relationship because there's so much focus on every other relationship in right. your life. Um, and, and so I think in this era of you know, we've all been in isolation. We've yeah. been in all of this turmoil. And so relationships have become the discussion topic, right? Mm. Um, this, the U.S. Surgeon General says loneliness is a public health uh, problem that we need to address. And so lost in that is, well, what about me? Yeah. What about the relationship I have with me? Yeah, that's the absolute most important relationship. I can't think of you know, another one. And if you, if you're not in a great relationship with yourself, I don't, I'm not the clinical psychologist here, but I don't think you can really have good other relationships. And that gives you, um, that's pretty rough impact on your mental health, I think. Well, if you think about the, the foundation of any good relationship, right, it's trust, it's respect, um, and those things are born out of a child's ability to love and respect themselves and to be able to set boundaries and to do the things that uh, make us all healthier mm-hmm. and happier uh, when we're alone and when we're with others. Yeah. I know you said something interesting um, to me before, <clears throat> just before we started this episode. You mentioned being lonely while you're in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. No, people don't think about it that <laughs> they way. They don't know. They don't. I think I think I, I might have had one or two of those yeah, relationships I, I think, myself. I think all of us. I think if you can't, <laughs> if you're in a relationship where you don't feel good about mm-hmm. yourself, yeah, then then you're not sharing your real self. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, it, it's authenticity gets a lot of word use, but it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't be your authentic self, then how how can you really have a relationship, right? Yeah. So if you are wearing this mask and being someone else, even while you're in a relationship, yeah. it's really easy to be lonely because you're not getting any of the things that a relationship should bring. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, kind of being what I thought other people needed to be, mm-hmm. me to be, like, or acting like I was, you know, I was fronting, you know, I was doing, this is what I am, even though it wasn't really what I was. So I think that probably was a basis that, you know, I was responsible for in previous, not such great relationships, but I didn't think I loved myself as much back then. Well, and I think we all go through a period, I think, you know, middle school and high school are all about who am I? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and settling in on, uh, what I think of me, apart from what other people, you know, what the message are. I used to always say to kids, like, yeah, there's a reason the head cheerleader wants to date the captain of the football team, right? Is this a power thing? Is this well, the original power couple? I, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's the original power couple, but it's because they were somehow this idealized, mm-hmm. you know, the prettiest, the most vivacious, the most this, and then the strongest, and the, you know, most powerful. And so... 
And if that was what you were trying to be, then boy, you were going to be kind of lonely until you figured out that they weren't all that happy sometimes either. Yeah. You know, recently I've been seeing these, uh, this TikTok um, out there on Miley Cyrus and she had a relationship and I think she's like this amazing example of loving herself, you know, so she, her husband dedicates the Bruno Mars song to her. Um, oh, the, the, the one about, um, when I was your man. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> her husband dedicates this song, okay, can, can, Bruno Mars' song. Yeah. But can we, but, can we start with what it says at when a I wedding <laughs> that your, your husband for your wedding dedicates a song about how he failed you? Yeah, they, <laughs> they started off right that way, yeah. So I, what I love about it is they they broke up, and according to her side, like, I haven't looked at his side at all. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what really happened, but he cheated on her, and all these things happened. And I love that she flipped the song on her head, and she created this song called Flowers. So, you know, it's, you know, I, I should have held your hand. I should have given you all my hours, uh, all of those yeah. things that he talks about in it. And she turns it around and says, I can talk to myself for hours. I can buy my own flowers, you know. I can hold She's my own saying, hand. Yeah, I can hold my own hand. She's like just <laughs> exhibiting this expression of healthiness. Like she took all that power back no matter what happened. And she said, I love myself. I don't need you. Well, to what was do funny this. about that too was when you listen to that video, that the one that juxtaposes, it, you know, the, yeah. the two, and he's in this sort of nostalgic, sad kind of mode. Oh yeah, from and Mars. she's like, yeah. in this she's really like dancing, like, dancing a, like I can buy my own flowers. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I love where she puts on his suit, um, uh, her ex husband's suit, and she's dancing through his house, just singing the song, and you know she's just really uh, ripping it up. And there's a lot of Easter eggs in there that's yeah. uh, pretty cool. So I just yeah. thought that was such a great way to be like, look, I'm good. I love myself. It's, it's all good. Well, and when you leave a relationship like that, mm -hmm. it's, you know, part of what you have to do is recalibrate who you are and what you, you know, and, and everybody, if there's a failed relationship, both sides contribute. Oh, absolutely. Right? So, yeah. So, so both sides have something and I'm sure that part of her introspection was around her pieces of it. Yeah. But I think we all leaving a relationship need to kind of reconcile with ourselves, mm -hmm. get back to being okay with ourselves mm -hmm. for not having had it work out yeah. for, for addressing whatever we thought we brought to that mm -hmm. not working out, whether it was just choosing incorrectly in the first place or, yeah. or making mistakes along the way. But I, I thought it was just a, a statement of, okay, I'm whole. Yeah. I'm good. Uh -huh. Move on. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, that makes me think about, you know, the reason that we have this episode, the one about loving yourself when you originally thought about doing it, it's because it's February and guess what's coming up? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. day. Yeah. Yes. The, v, the big VD. So yeah. we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, the, the day is Charlie Brown dreaded more than any other. In <laughs> yes, he did. Because <laughs> he know, never got any Valentine's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Peppermint Patty was going to pull that that football out. So Valentine's day is coming. It's February. We want to love ourselves, you know, so I don't want to get into too many of the details about how Valentine's day started, but it, because everybody disagrees on it. It's all these different reasons and there's the saint and there's this feast and blah, blah, blah. But that was back in the eighth century. So then in the 15th century, it became associated with you know, like a romantic love or love. And, you know, they started giving each other notes. And then in the 19th, mid 19th century, it comes over here to the United States. And guess what we did to it? Take a guess. Oh, it becomes the most commercialized holiday <laughs> next to Christmas and, and Halloween. <laughs> Absolutely. To the tune of in 2022, $23.9 million. So we're wow. banking on your pressure to spend that money. Right. Yeah. Well, Florists depend on it. It's oh, like they absolutely. make all the money they make all year practically on one yeah. major holiday, yeah. right? Probably that and Mother's and Day. Mother's maybe. Day, probably, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yes, yeah, it's, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure and you're sitting there and it's like, oh, am I going to get the right gift? Um, you know, am I going to give the right gift? Do I have a boyfriend? Am I, alone? Am I in a relationship? And am I in a lot? Yeah. Am I going to be alone? So that's pretty tough on our mental health, yeah. I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's the holiday that consolidates all of the pressure that young people feel yeah. to have to. Well, are you dating anyone? How yeah. often is that like the first question that, you know, you go home and you visit your parents, friends and say, oh, are you dating anyone? <laughs> like the dreaded question, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it sort of re represents all of your potentially being lonely, having ended something. Uh, I know people for whom it is absolutely the hardest holiday of the year. Um, Valentine's you, Day. Valentine's Day, because mm -hmm. it just seemed to, and I think Charlie Brown actually used to say this. And Charlie, I mean, Charlie Brown, it just highlighted everything that he thought was wrong with him. Yeah. That people didn't like him, that nobody loved him, you know, the little red, it, none of them. So, so it was just devastating. And I think it is that for a lot of people. Um, and, and I think if you're lonely, if you don't think highly of yourself and you're lonely to boot, then, then it becomes a very painful uh, experience. And a lot of people have been told it's selfish, right? Taking care of yourself yeah. is selfish, um, we talk a lot about uh, self care on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, and it's not selfish. It's not. It's necessary. Absolutely. It's, you know, there's a reason you get on a plane and they tell you to put the mask on yourself first. Yeah. You can't help anybody. You can't be good in a relationship. You can't be good in your life if you don't think you're worth taking time for, uh, paying attention to, mm -hmm. uh, and feeling good about yourself and telling yourself you are. Good. Yeah, and I know this impacts men and women, and I know women oftentimes feel like they need to take care of everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what we're told? Yeah. That's our role. I guess. That's what we see. We right. need to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you still have moms are the ones that take the most yeah. time in the household. They're still primarily the ones taking care of kids. So, yeah, I think for that, for, for women, they're the last on the list yeah. for themselves. You know, I was a single mom for a long time. And I really, I think, came to value self-care when a friend realized how stressed I was mm -hmm. and uh, gave me coupons for her massage therapist. Mm. And for years, I would get a, a massage every week. Yeah. You should. I do. And it was it was a two hour block because by the time yeah. I got there, had the massage, got back, um, it was a two hour block every Sunday afternoon that was just for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was transformational. And I think it led me to really think about, well, wait a minute, why why wasn't I doing something like this before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably because you didn't think you were worth the money or the time. There the were so effort. many things to do. I was so busy. Yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. yeah that's I wasn't I, top of my list. Yeah. That's why I go to the gym at six o'clock in the morning. People are like, you do what? But yeah, well, I've always told you, you do what? If I, yeah. You, <laughs> you, have, you have always told me you do yeah. what? But if I don't do it, then, then I get caught up in my day and it, it's my time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I think, you know, the, the whole notion that, um, and, and it's interesting because there's this pushback to some extent about it. But I think it's important at schools when they're very little to start helping yeah. kids see their own value mm -hmm. um, and see their own worth. And I don't mean that in that horrible sense that it gets made fun of, right? Yeah. The you're wonderful. No, I mean, but kids need to understand that, gee, I really like how you did that. That was really kind. Yeah. Um, was kind. I, I yeah. like the way you think. Yeah. yeah. I hope you understand how good that was and how nice that was, that what you did for your friend. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and then to say, you're not feeling so good right now. What can, what can you do that's going to help you remember all the good things about you? You're not feeling good because you failed that test. Well, let's, let's kind of put that into perspective of the rest of what you do during the day and during the week. Uh, to balance out those those negative messages. Yeah, because we all, we grow up, and then I don't know about everybody else, but I can tend to focus on that one thing oh, yeah. and the, the, you know, 
250 things I did in that day or however many it is. And one was right. slightly off. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, I'm such a failure. And I know I'm not, obviously. What's the evidence against that? That's, what's the data? <laughs> what's what the, the data, data say? What is the data here? You did 249 yeah. things. Right. Well. Yeah. 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 Well, and nobody is looking at you the way you're looking at you, yeah. right? It's yeah. like we we are just so willing to be self-critical and self-examining and finding the flaws. Mm -hmm. And I think we all do. We do that in everything, right? It's uh, um, it's so easy at work when we're dealing with problems and your mm -hmm. job is problem solving in one form or other to forget that not, you know, the problems are maybe 10%. There's this other 90% of stuff that's really flowing along quite nicely. Yeah, but... <laughs> right? And we do that with ourselves. There may be 90% of what we do that's just really chugging on all cylinders, but we're going to sit there and punish ourselves over that 10. Right. Uh, and then we get home and we're crabby and we're not very good in relationship and we wonder why nobody wants to talk to us. <laughs> like, so it's really important. To, yeah. to take a minute and put things in, in perspective. You know, we were talking at the beginning of this, and, and I think one of the things is that we never s see other people's insides unless they're vulnerable to us, unless it's somebody we're close enough to. And so typically what we're going around doing is comparing our inside to somebody else's outside. That is so profound, and I have never heard it said that way before. And it hurts, right? Because yeah. you're never look. It's never as good. No, it is not. You got to remind yourself. Yeah, you got all the you know the organs and the blood <laughs> and messy. all those things. It's messy. And then you know you have your pretty makeup and right. nice clothes, right. and you're looking at my yeah. ugly parts, and I'm focusing on my worst right traits. And the sad part <laughs> of that is that other people are looking at your outside and comparing it to their inside, and and it may be the same person you think you are not as good yes. at who's thinking I'm not as good as her either. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's a sad kind of loss for both of us. And it's, it is, it's, do we value ourselves enough? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go overboard. We, we know people who oh, over, oh, yeah. themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> but there's a core, you have we to have those people fundamental core belief mm -hmm. that you're good enough. Yeah. Then you have to love yourself. Yeah, you do. You just have to love yourself before you can do anything else. So, you know, celebrate yourself, you know, what, what can we do like right now about Valentine's day coming up? How can we, you know, try to bolster our resiliency and, and cope with the VD day coming? Yeah. Well, so, so if you're in a good relationship, you're in a new relationship or you're, you know, by all means do the flowers and dinner and dancing and all of that good stuff. If you're by yourself, think about, you know, um, think about what you want to do. What makes yeah. you feel good? Um, for some people, it may be go out and walk, you know, yeah. go mm -hmm. out and, and go watch birds, go bird watching, go to the gym at six in the morning, um, <laughs> take a bubble bath, you know, go yeah. to your favorite sports event, whatever. Buy yourself some flowers. Buy yourself some flowers. Make a gift basket. What would you put in your gift basket um, to yourself? In my gift basket to myself. Chocolate. Chocolate. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. A yeah. bottle of wine. Yeah. Candle. Yeah. Bubbles. Bubble bath. Oh, awesome. You know, just. Yeah. The beautiful thing about that is it's tailored to you. Right. Because so many times, I don't know, people sometimes give you gifts that you're like, who are you buying this for? But if you yeah. get them for yourself, you get exactly what you yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see that even in people with people in relationships. I think one of the most liberating things after a point is the ability to just say, don't buy me flowers. Yes. Here's what I'd really rather. Yes. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Rudy will bring, my husband will bring me flowers um, sometimes, but it's not like yeah. this big thing because I'm like, you know, they, they die. die. I appreciate them. They're so beautiful. They smell great. I smell them, but they're just going to die. Yeah. And they cost a fortune. Yeah. 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 Well, I never thought I'd see the day, but this year I actually, my Christmas gift was a Roomba. There you go. And I asked for it. Yeah. Because the dog exciting. is driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. And we kind of, my husband and I, we got rid of gifts a while ago. Like, what do we need? You right. know, we're always trying to figure out something. So yeah. we do trips or something like that. Yeah. So we're going on a trip uh, next week, and then we get back, and he's out of town on business, and he gets back right around Valentine's Day. He's like, 
do we do something for Valentine's Day? I'm like, what are we doing? I'm like, we don't do anything. He's like, oh, that's right. Okay, great. You know, yeah, and, and it gets to, so, so that's a comfortable place to be yeah. where you can or you can't celebrate it. Mm-hmm. I just think, I think the most important thing for people to take away is that there's no mandatory holidays. <laughs> You're not required to celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, and if you want to celebrate it and you're by yourself, celebrate you, celebrate yeah. who you are, um, your strengths. Think about an inventory of those. I think, again, um, people are all into gratitude journals. And, yeah. and I think gratitude is a great thing. It has phenomenal health benefits. But I also think it's important sometimes to do some self-affirmations. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if you're struggling with feeling good about yourself, find those. Instead of finding that one thing today that you did wrong, Find the three things that you felt like really went well or you did well or you made a contribution through. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Value yourself and what you give and what you do. And I think that's a that's all really important. Yeah. I think something you could do is um, back away from social media maybe yeah. Yeah, those couple days so you don't see all those. Because, like, who puts out on social media? I know some people put the negative stuff out. Yeah. You know, they're, like, naked out on there. But... Mostly people are putting their best moments out there. Like, I never post anything on social media unless we're traveling. And then I post travel pictures and everybody thinks my life is glorious. But it's just like everybody else's. But then I, you know, do some things. Unless you're living a Hallmark movie. Yeah. (laughs) Get off social media. <laughs> Definitely. So you could connect with your friends, maybe yes. if you have other friends, you can yeah. do um, a Valentine's Day or a boys' night out. We used yep. to uh, several years ago. Uh, we had this friend that would coordinate a Valentine's Day every year. Some of us were married, some of us right. weren't. Some of them were single, but we'd all just all go. It would be like the day before or the day after Valentine's Day, and. We'd meet at a restaurant and have some food and fun and laughs. Yeah, I think there's all kinds of ways you can celebrate. Or you can just simply say, it's not a holiday for me. Yeah, be selfish. Do it's what fine. you want. You know? yeah. It's yeah. a day like any, it's, it's going to, I don't know whether when it falls this year, but it's yeah. a day like any other. Yeah. And then, I, you know, if you're really struggling and it goes beyond, you can always talk to someone. You yep. can talk to a friend. You can talk to your primary care physician. You can talk to a therapist, you know, reach yes. out to a mental health center. Yeah. I think if this is a holiday that's particularly difficult, I yeah. think it's a really good idea to make sure you reach out um, mm-hmm. and and get some support uh, from somebody who understands the position you're in and, and who understands you and, and values you yeah. to help you remember you're worth it. Well, thank you for joining us today on The Brain Factor. We're so happy that you could spend this time with us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to The Brain Factor. Joy and I are so thrilled to be having these needed conversations. We'd love to hear your feedback on this episode, so if you could drop a comment or leave a review with your thoughts or any requests that you may have, it would be appreciated. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Living a healthier and happier life starts with one step, and we're excited to be on this journey with you. Until next time. Thanks again for joining us today on The Brain Factor. We look forward to seeing you next time as we talk about healthy lifestyle and this amazing thing called sleep.